Hey everyone, I'm back again, got another video for you. Uh, this is a new game to my channel. I think I might have mentioned it a few times in previous videos, or I might have mentioned it in forums and whatnot, but this is one of my favourite PlayStation 1 games. It's the uh, amazing seminal Ghost in the Shell. It's an absolutely fantastic game. One of the best original PlayStation games that I ever played and that's that's not really saying a hell of a lot because I didn't play all that many PlayStation 1 games it has to be said um, I think I owned 20 or 30 at, at the most so it's it's fair to say that I didn't really spread my wings with the whole PlayStation collection but either way this for me was some of the best fun I ever had on the PlayStation it's um, it's engrossing. It's based on one of my favourite manga movies, Ghost in the Shell. Um, the uh, story is pretty good. It's standard anime fare. Um, the idea is that you're one of the team that works with Kusanagi. Um, I can't remember if that's her name. I think that's her name, Kusanagi. Um, but yeah, these these things that they ride in, these red sort of mobile four-legged tanks. I don't know if you can see that on the back there. I don't know if you can see that there or not. I haven't got the flash on the, on the camera to try and help with the picture quality. Um, but yeah, the whole idea of the game is that you control these these vehicles, these little robots or whatever. Um, but it's it's just so brilliantly well done. I mean, the, the game controls and everything, but I'll, uh, I'll go into all of that in a minute. I'll go into why I love it all in a minute, but for now let's just have a look at the game. And I'll speak to you in a minute. in the shell um, it's got some lovely FMV anime sequences made specially for the game by I'm guessing the original manga team uh, the graphics for the PS1 were brilliant I thought um, they were really functional they were really good looking some some sequences that you'll see uh, look exceptionally good like the, um, the particle effects the explosions the the water effects and everything for 1997 or 96 when it was made 97 uh, yeah, they did so well with the graphics. Um, and in terms of in terms of the gameplay, uh, it's mission based. It's action shooting game. Uh, it's very fast paced. Um, you've got fairly short missions, fairly basic um, objectives. You know, you basically you go through a level, destroy all the enemies, maybe collect key codes or destroy targets like bombs that are going to go off but it does keep it fresh and mix it up everything's it's always changing it's always different the missions and i really love it because it's fast and fresh uh, i'll show you some more footage and i'll speak to you about it again in a minute <laughs>
my original PlayStation anymore. I have to play it using the the beast. Ah. The big bastard. Uh, you probably can't see that. PS2. Um, I did. I did have the PlayStation One, and when I originally played the game, I played it all on the PlayStation One. But once you got the PlayStation Two, there was really no point in keeping the PS One. I've also got the most pointlessly short AV cable for the PS2 ever. It's it's literally a meter. Um, I don't know how or why I bought, you know, how I managed to get a meter cable or why, but never mind. And this. This was my favourite PlayStation controller, uh, analog sticks, the dual, dual analog. Because if you remember, the PlayStation One initially started out with no sticks, uh, and the games that came out for it did not support the sticks. And it was a big, it was a big turning point. It was big. I can remember when um, the analog sticks first became usable, and the annoying thing with it was was that no matter what the game was, you could press the analog button there, and the light would come on, making you think, "Oh, it's going to work. It's going to work with analog." But no, they never did. And thankfully, although it only supported one analog stick, uh, it, it did work with the analog stick. And I actually find it, I actually find the game easier to control with this, uh, the D-pad, and mostly just the shoulder buttons and the D-pad. Um, this little four, four-legged robot, somehow, even though it's on legs and not wheels, I can only assume that there are wheels at the end of the legs because it darts around and spins about really quickly. And um, yeah, it was just the first game of its kind to really sort of just to really blow my mind. You could go on any surface. You could literally you could strafe around your enemies, and if there was environmental uh, obstacles like walls or fences or buildings, you just scoot right over them. You just it was brilliant. I used to fucking love it to bits, and um, it just made you really. It was the first game where you just really explored the environment in a 3D space and you just, you know, you didn't just follow a track or or go from left to right or whatever. I mean, there were other 3D games, there were other 3D action games, but there weren't any where you could literally, you could, you could strafe up a building, over the top of the building, climb up onto the absolute top of it and find a health power up or a grenade or, uh, you know, blow a helicopter out of the air with homing missiles and then spin down the other side of the building and hide out of the way of the helicopter's missiles. It's just a genius game, and it was so well made. Um, anyway, yeah, more footage, because I know you guys want to see more footage. Enjoy. on the mission variety earlier on. Uh, the first mission is a dock, uh, the, the actual environment, it's it's on the docks. You have to destroy four like enemy tank robot things, whatever you call them, because they are protecting key codes that allow you to get into the warehouse and then you destroy the boss. Um, pretty much every mission at the end uh, in, involves a boss that you have to destroy. Nine times out of ten it's a confined space or some kind of environmental constraint and you have to basically avoid their onslaughts while 
constantly hitting them so you, you have to make use of your strafing like one enemy will be in a tunnel and they'll send a beam down the tunnel at you and you just have to time it really well I'm to be honest I'm rusty I haven't heavily played this game for about 10 years but tonight I played it for an hour and I got to the mission 6 uh, I don't know if I'd ever complete the game without any cheats but I'd be more than willing to upload those videos anyway um, yeah back to what I was saying the first mission is uh, docks second mission is in a bunch of sewers and you're you're basically in very confined spaces going through these working your way through the sewers and you have to fight this enemy at the end third mission let me see you're destroying uh, explosive barrels and right away you find that the the time limit game levels are very very strict you can't just run around destroy everything and destroy the barrels you literally have to destroy all the barrels and avoid the temptation to destroy all the enemies and get to the next area and destroy the next one and get to the next area again uh, and that level is brilliant that's one of my favorite levels um, then it starts to really diversify you'll end up getting into like chase levels where you'll be on a little ship in one and you'll just be going through the water and there'll be enemies just coming all around you from all around the water and all you can do is turn on the spot or jump in the air you can't move off of the boat um, there's another one where you being chased down the road because you're driving at full speed down the road and it's basically it turns into nearly an on-rail shooter where you can turn around on the spot but you're constantly moving in one direction and you can change your position on the road but you can't ever stop uh, there are other missions but I haven't seen them tonight and I can't remember after that I don't think I ever got as far as I did tonight to be fair uh, and I only spent an hour playing it uh, yeah so anyway <clears throat> bottom line Ghost in the Shell is a fast furious brilliant shooting game on the PlayStation 1. Um, for me it's reason enough to own a PS1 because at this point you could probably buy a PS1 for about a tenner. I'd be very surprised if anyone was expecting any more money than that because there's so fucking many of them sold. This game might fetch a little bit more. I'm not sure how rare this game is to be fair. I'd be interested to hear actually if any of you know. Um, but yeah, one of my top five PlayStation 1 games. If any of you want to see any more footage let me know. Um, and also if you've got any other PlayStation 1 games that you want me to t test or show you then let me know about that as well I've got Metal Gear Solid I've got Final Fantasy VIII I've got WCW vs The World uh, I've got Typhoon Wrath of the Tiger I've got Wild Nine uh, I've got a couple others I can't remember what the others are but I'll um, I'll list them in the comment in, in, the, uh, in the info in the description in the video description I'll list all the PlayStation 1 games I've got and if you just send me a comment or a message I will endeavor to do another video for you anyway hope you've enjoyed this video hope you've enjoyed the footage and I hope that you will give that game a try even if you just try emulating it or whatever I don't care um, just enjoy it it's a bloody brilliant game and enjoy the rest of the footage and I shall see you soon